What's going on YouTube? This is Brent0331 and I hope you guys enjoyed the intro because that's exactly what this video is all about. Now in a previous video I featured the Primary Arms 1-8x24 optic. I've recently acquired a Trigicon TA31 ACOG featuring the Advanced Combined Sighting System or ACSS reticle inside. In my opinion guys, this is one of the finest combat optics on, that an individual infantryman can have on the modern day battlefield. Its thing is just awesome and it just pisses excellence. If General Mattis came knocking on my door and said, Gunny, get your shit, we're going to war, I'm telling you, I would grab a rifle with this, this ACOG with the ACSS reticle on it, because I know that that is the finest combat optic that I could possibly take with me into combat. thing is just awesome. So, that being said, if you saw my previous video, I talked a lot about the ACSS reticle. In this video, I'm going to talk a lot about the ACSS reticle, because it's what separates this optic apart from all others. It's just that fantastic. So... If you don't know anything about me, I'm a Staff Non-Commissioned Officer in the United States Marine Corps. I've literally served my whole career as an infantryman. I first deployed in 2003 for the initial invasion of Iraq. During that time frame, the standard service rifle was the m 62 service rifle with a fixed carrying handle. Only about one or two guys per platoon had ACOGs. They were attached to uh, m 4 service rifles, which were brand new, brand spanking new. And those guys went through a specialized course so that they could become designated marksmen. When I redeployed to Iraq in 2004, everybody had m 68 A4 service rifles, but not everybody had an ACOG. We upped that number to about one per squad now. So when I redeployed in 2011 to Afghanistan, virtually every single Marine had an ACOG on his weapon system to include RCOs on M16s, RCOs on M4s, SDOs on saws, and MDOs on M240s. Virtually every single weapon system that we employ in the United States Marine Corps now has some sort of ACOG optic on it. It is just a fantastic optic, and in my opinion, is one of the greatest battle implementations in the war on terrorism. So what makes the ACSS reticle so great? Well, for starters, it takes some of the best features from the most combat-proven optics, such as the RCO used by the United States Marine Corps and the uh, PSO-1 used on the SVD Dragunov, and incorporates them into one reticle. In addition to that, it also has several other features that help enable quick acquisition of a target and take some of the math and guesswork out of uh, engaging targets at distance. It's just a phenomenal reticle. I think by the end of this video, you guys are going to agree with me that this is the reticle that we need in our combat optics to help facilitate our guys slaying bodies. It's just amazing, guys. So I'm going to go ahead and start by uh, showing you guys the features that were borrowed from the uh, RCO and the, S the uh, PSO-1 to help uh, develop this ACSS reticle. And then uh, I'm going to show you guys how to actually use this thing. So I hope you guys enjoy the video. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to leave a comment and uh, let me know what you think. So let's start by talking about the PSO-1 that was used on the SVD Dragunov. The PSO-1 used a bullet drop compensation much like many of the modern day combat optics we see today. Additionally, the optic featured a built-in rangefinder at the bottom left of the reticle. The rangefinder was calibrated to 1.7 meters, this presumably being the height that the Russians determined was the average height of a man. The range finding scale in the PSO-1 is graduated from 200 to 1000 meters. To find the estimated range of your target, you would simply place the feet of a standing human target on the bottom line of the scale, and you would then match up the head of your target with the corresponding line. In this example I have here, our target is approximately 250 meters away. In this example, it is approximately 600 meters. Although this is a simplistic method, it is a fairly accurate way of estimating range, I want to remind you guys of the acronym KISS, which stands for Keep It Simple Stupid. Now moving forward a bit, we look at our modern day ACOG or RCO used by the Marine Corps. This is probably one of the most battle proven optics in modern times. And like I said, in my opinion, one of the greatest battle implementations during the war on terrorism. It is a true combat optic. This is the reticle for the current issue RCO. Marines have been using this reticle to slay bodies for virtually the entirety of the global war on terrorism. The optic is a fixed four power and has a built in bullet drop compensation for the 556 from 100 to 800 meters. Much like the Soviet era PSO-1, the RCO incorporated a way of estimating range by utilizing the hash marks on its reticle. The principle of this is that the average torso, shoulder to shoulder, of an adult male is approximately 18 inches. So you can estimate a person's distance by simply matching up their shoulder to shoulder width with the corresponding hash mark on the bullet drop compensation ladder. The hash mark that fits 
is your estimated range of target. In this example right here, this commie is approximately 400 meters away. In this example, he's approximately 600 meters. After determining approximately how far your target is, you would then simply just engage him by using the corresponding hash mark that you ranged him with. As you can see, the potential for this optic and being able to obtain a fairly accurate range estimation greatly increases your chances of being able to achieve hits on the enemy you're engaging. Before we had this capability, the number one method used by an individual Marine infantryman to estimate distance was simply to envision how many football fields there were between you and your target. Now since the ACOG's adoption, success has ultimately led to every weapon organic to the infantry line company to be outfitted with some type of ACOG variant. Every M16 and M4 in the Marine Corps' inventory has an RCO. M249 saws and M27 IARs have SDOs, and M240 Bravos have MDOs. All three are superb warfighting optics and reticles. The SDO and MDO optics have slightly different reticles than the RCO, but even those do not feature all the enhancements of the ACSS reticle. So now that we have taken a look at what the ACSS reticle was derived from, let's take a look at the reticle itself and see the influences those two optics had on it, as well as the additional enhancements that make this reticle, in my opinion, possibly the most finest, most utilitarian warfighting reticle available today. First let me start by stating that this reticle is currently set in yards and not meters. I believe that they are currently working on a meters version of the reticle if it's not already out there and available. When talking to Dimitri, who's the creator of this reticle, he said that the two biggest reasons for missed shots during sniper competitions were one, incorrect range estimation, and two, wind. The reticle tackles both those issues. So let's go ahead and take an in-depth look at this reticle. At first glance of this thing, you can probably already see the similarities between the PSO-1 and the RCO's reticle. So let's dive into the weeds here because there's a lot more to this reticle than just combining the best features of both those optics. First, let's look at it like this. Dimitri stated that the reticle is really two reticles in one, with the top being more for close quarters engagements from 0 to 300 yards, and the bottom half being medium range engagements between 400 and 800 yards. The top of the reticle features a big horseshoe design. This is for quick on-target acquisitions at close range. With the primary arms 1 to 8 optic that I'm going to show you guys later on in this video, when the optic is set to the 1, it operates pretty much like a red dot. Where the big horseshoe really draws in your eyes, making for very quick engagements. Just like the ACOG's reticle, it has several features that assist with range estimation of your target. The reticle is set for the average adult male's torso, shoulder to shoulder, of 18 inches. For 0 to 300 yards, the width of the horseshoe, your target is approximately 200 yards away. At the bottom of the horseshoe, your target is 300 yards away. Now look at the vertical bullet drop ladder and you'll see that it is just like the RCO. Match up the corresponding hash mark with your target's torso, shoulder to shoulder. The one that fits is the estimated distance to your target. Now in addition to using the enemy's torso to estimate their range, you also have the feature that was inspired by the PSO-1. And that is the vertical ranging bracket at the bottom right. This bracket is set to estimate range by height, which is set for 5 feet 10 inches tall, the average height of an adult male. Simply place the standing target's feet on the base line and match up your target's head with the corresponding line. In this example, our commie is approximately 400 yards away. So moving on from range estimation, I want to go back to the top of the reticle and talk about these two dots to the left and right of the horseshoe. These two dots are calibrated to be where you would hold when engaging a man who's sprinting holding a rifle. It is said that the average man running with a rifle moves at a speed approximately 8.6 miles per hour. So essentially, what you would do if engaging an enemy that is within 300 yards, you'd place the dot on him, and once the round is fired, he and the round will connect in the same spot. So this reticle has completely eliminated any math or guessing that needed to be done when trying to figure out how much you would lead when engaging a moving target. Additionally, with the same concept, you can use the outside of the horseshoe to engage a person walking, which is said that the average person walking with a rifle is approximately 3.1 miles per hour. To do this, you'd simply place the target on the outside of the horseshoe, and when you fire, your target will have moved right into the ramp path. This reticle also has pre-placed dots, which are calibrated for where you would hold on a target with a 5 mile per hour crosswind at a respected distance. Now obviously if your wind is greater than that, let's say 10 miles per hour, you simply just double the distance. Or if it was less than that, you could close the distance. 
In any event, it completely takes the math and guesswork out of it and makes for one hell of a combat opt. So that pretty much sums up my piece about the ACSS reticle. The reticle has even more capabilities than I've outlined here. So I encourage you all to check out some of the other videos that I have linked below in regards to this reticle's capabilities. Now let's take an up-close look at the two optics that feature the advanced combined sighting system that I have currently on hand. All right, guys, so I got two optics here that feature the primary arms ACSS reticle inside. Uh, this one right here, this is the primary arms 1.8 by 24 optic that I featured in my previous video. Uh, I've gotten an opportunity to do some more shooting with it, and I'm telling you, it's a fantastic rifle, uh, fantastic optic, especially for the price range. So anyways, kind of go about over this uh, optic a little bit. It is a second focal plane optic. It has a magnification setting from 1x all the way to 8x. So to change your magnification setting, you just rotate this uh, dial here. That would be 8x, rotate it back, putting it back on 1x. When it's on 1x, it pretty much serves as a red dot. I've had the opportunity to do some more shooting with this, and I'm telling you guys, the way the ACSS reticle inside it, the top portion of the reticle is you know, utilized for zero to 300 meters, and excuse me, three, zero to 300 yards. And when you enter a room and you have it on one X, I'm telling you when the target's right in front of you, it's, it's a quick acquisition because that, that horseshoe design in the reticle really draws in your eye and you're putting that sucker on that guy's chest and you're putting rounds right there on target. It's, it's pretty fantastic. So because it is a uh, second focal plane optic, you do have to have it, uh, the settings, the magnification maxed out to eight to utilize it to get all the max benefits of the ACSS reticle when you're engaging targets at distance. Um, so if you're going to be using the uh, the range, you know, the height range estimation scale on the bottom right hand corner or matching up you know, shoulder to shoulder to get uh, estimated range on individual's targets utilizing the uh, hash marks in the reticle, um, you got to have it maxed out to the 8x. So I don't really see that's a big deal because if you're engaging targets at you know, distance and whatnot, you're probably already going to have it maxed out to 8x anyways. So they do have, they do offer this particular scope in a 6x model. Okay, so again, this is the 8x model. There is a 6x variant that you can also uh, check out if you, if that's the desired uh, magnification setting that you want. So, but in any event, this is a good little package, gents. Um, like I said, I've had some more opportunity to shoot this ever since I first acquired it and I first did a uh, video on it. So excellent alternative to spending over a thousand dollars for a, uh, you know, an ACOG optic. But with that being said, guys, I'm going to go into talking about the T8, the Trigicon TA31 ACOG that I have here that features the ACSS reticle. Now, like I said, the price range is going to be just over a grand. All right. It is not cheap. You are, uh, you're getting what you're paying for because this thing is freaking awesome. Um, if I was going to be dropped in the middle of Tehran, Iran, and I had to fight my way back, <laughs> this is this is the optic that I'd want on my rifle, okay? Uh, specifically with the ACSS reticle because I am, I'm completely sold on this thing. It's the, the features inside the ACSS reticle are just fantastic. So one thing I want to talk about, though, is... You know, this is that's one benefit that this optic has over the ACOG is that you're getting that CQB, you know, when you have it on that way, 1X, you're getting that CQB, you know, essentially red dot uh, um, effectiveness with this optic just by rotating it to the 1X. With the Trichicon ACOG, I pretty much had to buy a Trichicon RMR to mount on top of it to get the same type of uh, capability, okay? So when I'm engaging targets at, you know, 100 to 300 meters or beyond, you know, I'm obviously I'm using my, uh, my ACOG, but if I'm entering rooms, room clearing, stuff like that, I'm using my R RMR on top of my uh, ACOG. So to me, this right here is the perfect war fighting package. Um, trust my life with this. I've been in combat and used this particular optic in country. It is just a fantastic piece of gear. 100%, if I'm going into combat, this is what I'm taking. <laughs> Hands down, all right? So, but again, it is, it is pricey, guys. I understand that. My recommendation is save up your money, if you can, to get this thing, all right? To get a Trigicon ACOG or a variant of it. Um, they are just battle-proven. In my opinion, it's the greatest battle imp implementation on, in the War on Terror um, that we've had. And it's just combat-proven. I don't think there's any other optic out there that is as combat-proven as the Trigicon ACOG, okay? Uh, we've been using this thing to slay bodies for... 
<laughs> for the over decade that we've been fighting the global war on terrorism. So, but you know, if you're one of these guys, you need an optic now. You know, you can't wait to save up this primary arms one to eight by twenty four, or the primary arms one to six by twenty four is an excellent alternative, guys. I'm telling you, all right. So, but in any event, I got this uh, got this new Trigicon ACOG. Uh, TA31 with ACSS reticle inside it, and this is how it comes. Okay, so you get the standard TA31 mount. There are plenty of mounts out there for ACOGs. The one we use in the Marine Corps now, when we first got ACOGs, this is the exact mount that we had, but the one we have in the Marine Corps now is the uh, GDI mount. It's real a quick release, so you have a quick release lever here, and those are actually pretty cheap too. I have one at the house, I just haven't installed it yet. But, uh, any event, guys, so I'm going to be shooting with this today. Um, you know, all, all TA31s essentially look the same. I think, let me look at this. Yeah, so this one has the uh, the new knobs, so you can just literally adjust the, uh, you know, your point of aim, point of impact with the uh, the turn knobs here. Uh, the ones we have in the Marine Corps, you actually have to turn with uh, utilizing the a shell casing or a round or whatnot or a screwdriver, flathead screwdriver to actually adjust that. So um, that's a good feature there. You can do it by hand instead of having to use, utilize a tool but so you don't have to worry about batteries or anything like that you know it, it will light up light up your reticle it will make it uh, easy to see one thing I want to mention is this is a common trick we do in the Marine Corps is we just take some electrical tape and cover up a portion of the that you know the, the reticle itself is not that bright all right because when you look in there and you have it completely covered or completely uncovered like this it's very bright it might be a little bit too much okay so this is a trick that we we commonly do it's kind of your shooter preference all right maybe you want to have that really bright reticle that's your you know your cup of tea more power to you if that's too much for you just take some duct tape or excuse me uh, electrical tape or some other type of tape and just cover up part of it all right that's something a lot of us do in the uh the marine corps we've been using these things for for over a decade like i said so event guys I'm gonna be doing uh, I'm gonna be shooting this thing for the first time I'm very excited about this I'm very stoked because the ACS reticle is inside it and it's just fantastic so um, eventually probably after today I'm gonna take all this gear this RMR this kill flash and I'm gonna trans transfer it from this ACOG over to this one because I want to use I want this uh, I want this TA31 with the ACSS reticle as my primary go-to combat rifle. Um, so this has a standard ACOG reticle inside it. I'm gonna swap that out for this ACSS reticle um, after after today after I get done shooting because I'm telling you this is this is my new go-to right here. So super excited about this guys. But uh, anyways, long story short, I'm gonna put some rounds down range. So uh, let's get to it. Alright guys, I'm going to be zeroing this optic now. So I'm going to be shooting from the 100 yard line. I'm going to shoot uh, about 10 rounds, shoot two uh, groups of three, and then I'll finish off with a group of four. Alright, so here we are, 100 yards. This was my first string of fire. Uh, one thing I want to note is that this was actually kind of difficult to uh, see back there in the prone with the high grass and everything. So I'm actually going to color that in with a Sharpie and maybe it might be a little bit easier to see. In any event, this was my first string of fire. Um, each block is an inch and one click on the ACOG is a half an inch at 100 yards. So I need to make some pretty bold adjustments to uh, bring my point of impact down there to the center. So. In any event, let's go ahead and mark these, and then I will make my corrections, and then we will shoot another three rounds.
All right, so that was the second string of fire. Brought it over here. I actually went uh, 15 clicks right and 15 clicks down. So getting closer. So I'll mark these off and then uh, take another another string of fire here. All right, third string of fire, BZO. All right, so there we go. Um, really can't make any adjustments on that. So that looks uh, good. I shot four rounds as a confirmation fire. So again, this is the first string. This is the second string. And then one, two, three, four. These are my four impacts for my last string of fire. So I could chalk this up to pretty much just, uh, you know, me, um, you know, whatever. So I would say that that's, that's pretty good, um, you know, 100 yards. So I'm going to go ahead and move it back. Now that I got my BZO, I'm going to go ahead and move it back to the 200 now and uh, shoot from the 200 and see, see how well we do. But uh, I'm going to replace this target with uh, a shoot and see target now. And uh, same deal, I'm going to put it on his chest. And then uh, we'll go back to 200 and uh, see where the impacts are of the 200. All right, guys, so I'm about to go shoot the 200-yard line. So in the ACSS reticle, you have a chevron tip like this, all right? So when you're aiming in at the 200, use the tip of the chevron for 100, and then the base of the chevron, so right on the base, is going to be the 200-yard mark, okay? So when I go back there, I'm going to actually put the, uh, I'm going to put the chevron's base center mass on my uh, where I want my point of impact to be. Alrighty guys, so here we go. Alright, another thing guys I want to point out is I'm not using any cut or any uh, any sandbags or anything like that. I'm just shooting off my elbow. Um, I want to stress that this is a combat optic so I'm not using any uh, artificial support or anything like that. I'm just using my own natural born, bone support and uh, shooting fundamentals. So. Here we go. Might have been a little right.
10 rounds. Let's go down range, check out the target. All right, so we got impacts. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So everything's here. Looks like that one probably would have went over his shoulder. Would have been a miss. So other than that, you know, kill shots for the most part. Um, I was aiming center mass at the diamond. I just had the uh, so just putting the tip of the chevron, the base of the chevron is what I was trying to line up with this diamond. However, at 200 yards, <laughs> it's uh, you know it's hard to do with uh, no support. But uh, did what I could, and as you can see, the uh, the rounds are predominantly right here in the center center mass. So pretty good, guys. Uh, yep, yeah, uh, I'm gonna move on to some running and gunning now, and uh, see how we can do with uh, some some quick acquisition shooting on the move, utilizing cover and whatnot. All right, guys, so this is going to be a final course fire. Uh, just going to be doing a little run and gun, utilizing the uh, Trigicon ACOG with uh, ACSS reticle. Just kind of testing out the uh, quick acquisition with that horseshoe. So pretty much going to be starting back at the 100, going to fire a few rounds, going to uh, move forward, go prone, fire a few more rounds, move to the uh, first piece of cover, transition from shooting from uh, the different sides, move to the next piece of cover, shooting from uh, different uh different positions in the different windows. Moving to the last piece of cover, again, shooting from the different sides. And then uh, we'll uh, sprint up here, do a little shooting on the move, and then finish off with blasting Bin Laden in the face with a uh, Glock 21. So, let's see how it goes.
Not too bad. Looks like we got a flyer here. And that's it. This is uh, made by the staple, so unless I just completely miss one, that should be the only flyer. Good deal. That's it guys, that concludes this video over the advanced combined siding system or ACSS reticule and the two optics that I own that feature very 100% behind the ACSS reticle. I think it's amazing. We need to get it in the hands of our warfighters, all right? Um, the current gear that we're using, the, R the reticle and the RCO, it's, it's good to go, but this ACSS reticle is better, all right? We're, <laughs> we need to be improving our stuff. We've been utilizing the same thing for over a decade now. Um, so I really do hope that Whoever the powers are at BA that are looking at gear to replace the next for the next generation of Marine Corps warfighting optics need to look at this. All right. Um, I've spoken to the uh, creator of the ACSS reticle, Dimitri. He works for Primary Arms. The guy's a great American. His end state is just literally to get the ACSS reticle in the hands of our warfighters and coalition forces. And also, this is very important to most of you that are watching, to get it in the hands of an individual prepared American citizens that just need something to defend their family, all right? So whether it's somebody freaking breaking in your house in the middle of the night or freaking Soviet paratroopers falling out of the sky and you're taking to the hills, the ACSS reticle needs to be in your optic to defend your family, okay? So it has my 100% stamp of approval, guys. Hope you enjoyed this video. I appreciate you guys tuning in and watching the, the entirety of this thing. Uh, please feel free to comment below. I will do my best to respond to anything you guys post. If I can't answer it, maybe Dimitri might see it and he might answer it for you. All right. Thanks for watching, guys, and don't forget to leave a comment.